You guys, uh, first off, I want to start off by saying what an unbelievable crowd. I mean, to come out to a small town and have whatever, 300 people, I think we heard, to have 300 people at a meeting to talk about something that hasn't happened is pretty impressive. So congratulations. The other thing I thought about was they said, do you guys want to know what we wished we knew? I thought of my first comment should be, run! <laughs> that should set the tone, right? You know what's coming. If you were standing out in the middle of a field and you were watching this herd of buffalo coming towards you, what would you do? You would run. So with that, if the oil comes, like in Montreal County, five years ago, we were in the same position you are, sitting here today. And I did make some notes, which is really unusual for me. I wanted to state the speakers behind the, are after me. I'm going to make them look really good. So bear with me in the fact that I actually did make notes today. But I'm just going to share with you just a couple facts. Um, the, in two, well, just for this year, in Montreal County, in my county, in the 5% oil and gas production tax, the state of North Dakota took in $181 million worth of, the, of tax on that gross production tax. Montreal County got $20 million of that back, which is about, I don't know, $200 million short of what we need. So that's where you guys are five years from now. I guess with that, I, I just have a, another theory for you guys. If we, if we, I can, I'm going to tell you guys how to get rich. Is that exciting or what? <laughs> if oil comes, because I visiting at the table, some people don't believe it's coming. There are those who say, watch out. If you look at the map in the back where the Bakken was, and they're drilling 200 wells a month, and they come here and they, Mackenzie County, as of like today, has 55 rigs really. If you get 55 rigs in your county, you'll know what I mean by a buffalo herd. So with that, if you really want to know what I wished I knew, which would have made you rich, if you live in Glen Allen, and I'm just going to use that because it's here, I know there's some other small towns, and oil is going to hit Glen Allen, first off, Buy every house in town that's for sale, pay whatever they're asking because it's going to be really cheap compared to five years from now and you'll make a ton of money. If there's land available, buy it. You can sell it later for a ton of money. If you don't like a lot of traffic, if you don't like dust that hangs for miles, and I mean miles, not a, not a grain truck that's hauling, you know, four loads of grain to the elevator in a day, Hundreds of trucks going down your road, creating dust on a still day that's worse than a snowstorm. What you should do if you live in Glen Allen, and this is going to be a Stanley, let's say, or a Watford City, or a Williston, sell your home here. Well, don't sell it now. Wait till oil hits. Move to Judson. Coming out here, I was like, Judson, can't be, you know, they can't have a lot going on, right? If you like your pe I, I drove up here today, I got off of 94, I drove all, it's like, is it nine miles, am I right? Five. Huh? Five. Five? Off of 94? Here, here. Okay. Man, I thought it was nine. Okay. Well, it was so enjoyable. I met no one. Zero cars. I was going to use nine, but okay, five miles, I met none. My township road at home, in one mile, I can meet way more than five. That's a township road, seven and a half, seven miles out of partial. Okay? And I'm a storyteller, by the way. I'm not a facts and figures guy. So, trust me, the guys behind me, they'll be much better at it. But anyway, I thought, well, okay, there's one way to get rich. And I noticed I drove through Glen Allen. Nice little town. I, I've been here before, but just I took 15 minutes and drove through town. Like the mayor said, what a nice little town. It's clean. And it's quiet. And I stopped at Senex. And you know what happened at Senex? People were calling each other by name. I'll tell you what. 
Five years ago, we used to do that at home. You know what we do now? I don't know what they're saying, because it's a different language. I don't know a soul at the local restaurant other than me and my wife, and she's sitting beside me. Your world changes. The question for this meeting was, what do we wish we knew? Well, that's one of them, like, you know, buy the land, make the money. If oil don't come, you're screwed. I'm sorry, but that's part of investing. <laughs> Anyway, driving through Glen Allen, what, I, what the city probably wished they knew was how much water the oil industry takes, okay? We have in partial, partial makes, if you guys want to fund your city when oil comes, you have, a, I believe, you know, if the city guy is here, you can correct me, a two-inch spigot, you know, kind of sits out and you can fill water down here, I don't know, along Main Street or whatever it was. Make that a three or four inch one and make three or four of them. You will make a ton of money. So, aside from that, put it out of town a ways because you won't have a main street left. I mean, you got to have somewhere for trucks. Which leads me to the second one we wished we knew. I wished I would have known. I would be very rich if I had done all these things. I guess that the other side, the banker would have had to go along with me, so the bank would have done well too. So see, this spreads, guys. Buy, buy a parking lot. For trucks, just say, come and park your trucks here. Put a plug-in out. You have no idea what they're paying for that, guys. And I'm going to say, I don't know. They're, they're all over the board what they're paying. But anything like that, if you can get them out of town, then the township has to worry about it or the county, right? Uh, let's see. Going from there, I'm just going to go to roads. You guys, if you guys want to pass, I got three pictures. They aren't the best pictures. And I told the guys at my table, we're just going to pass them around. I don't have 200 of them or whatever, 300 I heard was here. Um, just look at them. It's kind of where we're at in Montreal County, but you guys have nice roads. I know I drove on them. <laughs> Today when you go home, drive on your road and realize how blessed you are. And I know a lot of you are going, What's he talking about? Because I had that question right at the table here. We got bad roads. I'm going to tell you something. Five years from now, you mark my words. Five years from now, you call up your... I'm going to tell you something you need to do today. Because you, all of you... How many of you... I want a show of hands. How many of you have complained about your county and township roads? Okay, and the rest of you are lying. Okay. <laughs> Five years from now, you're going to be apologizing you to your county commissioners and your township people for complaining about your roads today because you have good roads. Trust me. There are roads. I have a road. I have a road by my place. It's a township road. It's a main hall road for the oil company. We have five to seven hundred vehicles a day on that. Forty percent of them are trucks. Think of that. How many go by your place in a day? Five? Maybe. I used to drive to Stanley, North Dakota on 23 and 8, State Highway 23 and 8, my father-in-law and I, and we would look at fields and visit and, you know, wave at the car we met. 35 miles, right? That one car. You drive down Highway 8 right now, which is like coming in off 94 to Glen Ullen, those five miles, I would guarantee you, you better have your hands on the wheel, and if it's raining and dark and that road's not striped like Highway 8 was going to Stanley this summer, you should stay home. Things will change, guys. But the other side of it is, things aren't always changing for the worse. But just some things to know. Uh, that's road issues. There's some pictures. we got a sheriff's patrol out on the road. I'm a, I'm a visual guy, so I want you to visualize this. It's June, right? How many of you guys have chains for your trucks? Ever use them in June? Probably not, right? Half inch of rain, what happens to a township road? It's muddy, correct? If you've got a truck and you're going up a hill carrying a heavy load, obviously you're going to be spinning, am I not correct? Okay, you take an oil field truck. By the way, guys, oil field goes 365 days a year, 24 hours a day, 
they do seem to let up a little on Sunday. And Christmas. So, that's impressive. But other than that, it just goes. So here we are, middle of June, we get a half inch of rain. I'm driving down this township road. Here comes a truck up this big coulee. And I'm like, boy, I'm just going to pull over because, you know, he's taking up most of the road. And I've heard stories, and I've never seen this before, but this truck, has tandem truck, has chains on all four tandems, and he's got chains on the steering axle to keep it on the road. Now, can you imagine what that truck is doing to that township road? He's digging ruts six inches deep or more. That's one truck of how many that day that drove that road on a rig move. That's what happens. It takes money to fix roads. I don't believe they say that we what, what we wished you knew, or we wished we knew. If we had the money, we would have fixed all the roads in Montreal County. They would have been to the specs of I-94. And I think, I told Shirley I'd call on her. Shirley could probably tell you the state of North Dakota roads aren't holding up so well either, are they? And they're paved to a lot better specs than your county and township roads are. So guys, if you can, get them cemented like the interstate. I don't know if you guys want to pay that kind of taxes, but that's what will save your road. The other thing I want to tell you is, I see you guys have scoria. I think the guys from Mackenzie County thought they'd never run out either, but they'll probably tell you that they're running short on the scoria end. And they, I know that they've looked at getting gravel railed in. You will run out because oil industry uses tremendous amounts, and if you're, they have looked into, I know this for a fact, railing gravel in was $50 a yard. I don't know what you pay in Glen Allen, but 15 is a minimum in our county. So your prices are going to go up. I'll tell you, that's kind of roads. If you can, even until five years from now and until you get 30 rigs, you're not going to believe what I tell you about roads, but in five years, if I come back here, you guys are going to say, man, I, I, I listened and I didn't believe you. Because we did the same thing. So I'm going to go to housing. I'm going to guess that in Glen Allen, you know, I should probably ask someone, is that how you say it? It's not like you or nothing, right? Okay. <laughs> I don't want to offend anyone. I would guess that you could probably rent a, I'm going to say a, Two bedroom apartment for five, six hundred bucks pretty easy. Would I be wrong in assuming that? A house for a thousand dollars? Or down? Okay. Partial North Dakota, Stanley, North Dakota, Williston, North Dakota. If you could get one for that, it would not last. If you put it, if you start on Main Street with a sign, you would not stand there for an hour. You'd probably stand there for 15 minutes until someone seen it and it would be taken. Housing becomes, I wish we knew, because like I said, I'd have been rich, but you need, if you build housing, they'll come and use it. If you don't, you local people, first off, because your house, you, you decide you're moving to Judson, right? My first thought. And you're going to sell your house in Glen Ellen. Your house, obviously now that that house that you bought for $25,000 40, 50 years ago, now sells for 200000 What does that do to your market value of your houses in Glen Allen? You sell, and there's 10 guys that sell houses like that, and trust me, it'll happen. 10 guys sell their houses, all of a sudden, the value of all the houses in Glen Allen is where? Way higher than it used to be. Who's going to pay the taxes on them? You guys. Okay? Just to let you know. I hope when I leave here you don't realize it's all doom and gloom because i got to think of a joke so you have something happy. <laughs> this is reality, guys. And, and I think the guys from McKenzie, they'll have facts that you can see. Um, I'm going to throw just another one on roads while I'm thinking of it. And you'll have to stop me because the last time they told me I had 15 minutes, I spoke for an hour and 10, and I didn't think I could do that. <laughs> Um, I think that there's a permit thing on one of them sheets I handed out, and in 2006, I believe, Montreal County had like, uh, who has that sheet right now? Is it like 
600 overweight truck permits, something like that. It's, it's right on the bottom of nothing. Last year, just about 8,500. That's overweight trucks, and that's only those that apply. There are those that just go without. And overweight truck permits as high as 360 to 400,000 pounds. How'd you like one of them coming down your township road over your township bridge? And that's, trust me, where they go because they're too heavy to go anywhere else. Anyway, just a thought on the road deal. Now I'm going to look at my sheet because I forgot where I was. Um, okay, we got housing, water, oh, planning and zoning. And I, I knew there was some planning and zoning people here. Get your planning and zoning in order, and I'm going to let the guys from McKenzie tell you what happens if you don't have it, because they'll be good on that. And we even put a, we put, I know you guys banned man camps, so did Montreal County, and we felt we had to, and here's why. We should have had some stuff in place that, first off, there was a fee, which the fee would have been to support our emergency services, our fire department, our ambulance, and so on, because what you have is, I'm sure in Glen Allen do they have a volunteer ambulance and fire department, am I not correct? Okay, and those people, the volunteers, probably work in Glen Allen or somewhere, right? Have day jobs. Okay, if you're going, how many here on an ambulance service? Okay, how many runs a day? Less than one? Yeah? You move up to Stanley or Partial or Newtown, probably like five a day, every day. How would your boss feel if you were going on five runs a day as a volunteer for the ambulance service and they're keeping your job? You will get to the point where we are all looking at a paid ambulance service. You're probably going to get to the point of needing a full-time fire department. Your police department will be, well, we were talking in the back earlier, and you guys don't have the oil yet, but you get some of the, what was it, Hedinger County, you know, you get some of the drift, as it would be, and they're having problems, you know, with policing and stuff. Wait till you get oil. You'll never keep up. You'll be hiring and hiring and hiring. Who pays for that? There's the part I want to really make you guys know. Oil is good, okay? It's going to make a lot of people rich. Any of you farmers in here that own quarters and quarters of lands and have the minerals, you lucky guys. If oil comes and they hit good wells, you're going to get to retire a lot earlier. To those of you farmers who don't have any minerals and farm quarters and quarters of land, you poor fellows, I feel sorry for you because you're going to have to drive your equipment on them roads and you're going to use words that you never used before and you're going to replace, your repair bills are going to get a lot higher. That being said, oil's not all bad. They're good people in oil. The people in oil are just like you guys because they're working jobs. I guess there's bad in everyone. There's bad people probably in this room. Probably not because you know this community. <laughs> but <laughs> oil too, those people are out trying to make a living, trying to feed their family, trying to retire, whatever. So I mean they're just like us for the most part. And that's one thing I always keep telling myself. Because somewhere along the line, your local people in this room will get greedy if oil comes, because there's money to be made, and I'm sorry. I don't care if I take it from you and you're my best friend. It will happen. The other thing that I wish we had known, which I got to keep using that, right? That's the theory behind the deal, right? I wish we had known to clear up everything title-wise or land-wise in the county because oil will clear it up for you. Because there are landmen, oh by the way, those of you who work in your county courthouse, Make room and decide how to deal with people because it'll be full. But your recorder's office will be busy because when, when you guys, 
Some of you will, rural people will know this. Ever heard of an abandoned cemetery? There's a lot of them, aren't there? Who owns them? Good question, isn't it? When you start having three, four acres, five acres in a cemetery, and each one of them acres has minerals involved in it, does your church own that cemetery? Is there a cemetery board that land was donated to? Or does the county own that cemetery? Find out before they come. <laughs> There's just things, guys, you could never think of. Like I say, five years ago in Montreal County, we sat at the tables just like you at a couple of meetings and listened to a few people and thought, ah, it's, it would be so much fun to watch a video. I know you guys are taping some of this. It would be so much fun to watch a video of what we said five years ago. And, and I'm sure that Shirley Meyer out here could tell you that Dunn County is the same way and McKenzie and Williams and, you know, the guys that are really getting hit now. And maybe I should say it. I feel sorry for you guys because at least you're looking into it and you're doing some things, but you got, it's going to take a while before the good outweighs the bad. And that's just a fact. But the other side of it is some of you will be rich and move to Arizona and it won't bother you a bit. There's one thing that I will say. Out-of-state mineral owners really benefit from oil. Have you thought of that one? They get a check. They have nothing to do with us. They have no bad roads. Their taxes aren't going up. There's nothing to do here. What better deal could you have? And we put up with everything. So if you have any of them and they're family members and they get a check, you should tell them how blessed they are that you stayed here so that they could get a check. Let's see what else I got. How far behind am I? I'm there, I bet. How much? About there. I'm about there. Shoot, I'm good then. Okay. Um, oh. I, I really don't have much else on my list. A couple of facts. Oil's good, you guys. It, it's not going to be all bad. Here's what we did. This is Montreal County, and here's how we went. In 2007, we, we put out 235,000 barrels of oil a month. And you know, I like the way that that doesn't sound like much, but you guys that are farmers in here, I farm. 235,000 barrels. Okay, if you're really good at math, take that times 42 gallons per barrel. That's a lot of gallons, and I couldn't tell you how much, but, you know, 42 gallons in a barrel. So when you see that barrel, that's a big chunk of oil. Okay, August 2007, August 2008, one year later, we're at 1.5 million barrels of oil. 28% of the state's production. August 2009, we're at 2.9 million. Do you think we were at the state legislature bitching? You bet we were. We got problems. That's the kind of growth we've seen. And I think the other four, Dunn and Williams, <coughs> Williams, you know, Bowman had it years ago. When you see that kind of growth, you've got problems. Then we went, the next year, we went from 2.9 in 09 to 4.2 in 10. And, well, 11, we're at 4.2. And we're right now, we're standing at 30% of the state's oil production. So there's some, uh, some growth things. And, and for those of you who, if you missed it, there's a chart back in the back, and it's Mark, and I can't remember his last name, from Hedinger County, right? And you look at that chart, there's a Tyler formation on there. Bet you guys have never heard of that, right? You know, and they've got the Bakken on there. And you look at the wells on there, and I can't remember the year he said that's up to. But now you just think there's 200 drilling rigs in North Dakota right now, and you throw another 200 pins on that every month. And if that line comes down in your area, just take the time someday, drive through Stanley, Newtown, Parshall, Williston, Watford City, and know where you're going to be in five years. And with that, I'm going to say, I hope oil works well for you. If nothing else, it gives people like me a chance to run around the state and talk. 
and it's kind of fun. You meet people from all over. And uh, those of you, call me someday and tell me you apologize to your county commissioner for your bad roads. <laughs> <laughs> that you shouldn't have complained about at this point. Thank you, guys.